eBay is charging this $20 dispute fee. What are we talking about here? Well, on the other side of the intro, I'm gonna discuss that and go into detail that it just seems others won't do. So without any further ado, let's go. Welcome back to the channel. My name is John from Flippin' Ain't Easy. For those of you who've never watched my video before, I'm a full-time eBay reseller. I sell on other platforms as well, but the purpose of this channel is to help other resellers, primarily on eBay, succeed, maybe learn from my mistakes, and to just learn together. That's what this uh, platform on YouTube, this channel on YouTube, is about. So before I get started on this topic of the $20 dispute fee that eBay is charging people, please do me a favor, hit the like button. Uh, if you like this content, if you've watched my videos before and you're looking for a channel that is gonna provide you this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, do me a favor, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I make a video or every two weeks I go live and answer your questions. So getting onto the topic, what is this $20 dispute fee that I keep hearing about? I know I've never paid one and you may not have paid one, but you may have. So what exactly is this? Well, I can tell you what it is. When a customer goes to their credit card company and files a dispute or what we call a chargeback for the amount of the purchase, then eBay is going to charge you a $20 dispute fee when they find you at fault. Not eBay finding you at fault, but the credit card company. And we're gonna discuss that here in a minute in detail. But um, what it isn't is it isn't a fee that they're gonna charge you when a customer opens a case. A customer can open up a return case against you for maybe item not as described or any other reason, and that opens a case. They can also open a case for item not received. Let's say there's a delay in receiving the package. Um, you know, you have inauthenticity claims that customers can make about an item and that sort of thing eBay will not charge you a $20 fee if a customer opens a case against you. That's not how this works. This has everything to do with the fact that eBay has to go to at bat for you, the seller, against the credit card company. And they are now the middle person or middle entity in this interaction between you and the customer's bank. So when eBay comes to you, and they ask you for all this information, you, you gotta be on board, comply, because eBay is trying to help you win this dispute against the bank. So that's what it's about. It's the fee that they charge, eBay charges, to do the groundwork on your behalf should you lose the case. And we're gonna go into that here in just a minute. So we know what this $20 fee is. Now, why would a customer initiate a chargeback. Well, in my case, I've dealt with eBay twice for chargebacks. This is before this $20 fee ever came into play, by the way. And in both cases, it was due, in my opinion, to a scammer. Uh, one with that $1,200 server that uh, someone in the United States bought, shipped out to Europe, and then they tried to say it was thrashed, you know, thrashed when they got it, bad condition. And I got to tell you, that was definitely a scammer. Another one where they claimed with their credit card company that they didn't know what the transaction was. And we resolved that. And I don't know if the customer may have changed their mind with their bank or I provided enough proof to show that uh, we did everything we were supposed to do. In both cases, eBay went to at bat for me and while it was not pleasant to have that money on hold for up to 90 days, it was eventually resolved and the money was returned to my account. Now, had 
the customer filed a chargeback now with this new rule in place, I would still not have been charged the $20 dispute fee from eBay per their policy. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Just so you know, a customer can charge for many reasons, do a chargeback or a dispute with their credit card company. Now let's put the scammer idea aside because you do have people that are genuinely confused. Maybe they don't recognize, legitimately don't recognize a transaction on their credit card. Credit card companies make it very easy for people to dispute their credit card charges. Even sometimes you can go on and press a button on an app to dispute or at least start the dispute process. So if we're dealing with a legitimate case, that means to me that a customer has probably tried to contact you as a seller through the eBay messaging system, or maybe they bypassed that and decided to open a return case against you. This is where you need to do your due diligence and make sure you're replying to that customer in a timely manner. You're very thorough with what and clear with what you're telling that customer. And, and that's for all cases because we really don't know which one of these cases will end up as a potential chargeback. So let's assume you've done all that and you receive a message from eBay saying that the buyer has opened a dispute against you. What happens is any return requests, any cases that that customer has opened previously will now become closed by eBay, okay? And eBay will contact you and ask you to provide as much pertinent information as you can provide. And usually like on an item not received case, I know it's, it's redundant and I don't understand why they would ask you this because they have the information. They are gonna ask you to provide a tracking number that you used to ship the, the package to the buyer, okay? Go on, find the information on eBay or Pirate Ship or wherever you happen to obtain your label through and go in and just copy and paste it back to eBay and that should be sufficient for such an item not received case. Now, let me back up for a second. This $20 fee is a lot like if you get pulled over, let's say you're speeding and you get pulled over and you get a ticket, okay? You can either choose to pay the ticket and in doing so, you pay the ticket you can have your points waived against you uh, uh, that's on your record. A lot of states allow you to do that. Now, if you choose to fight, okay, and go to court, stand in front of the judge, you probably, and just depending on what state you're in, will not have that option to have those points waived on your record should you lose the case. And that's what this is with the eBay $20 dispute fee. If you win the case against this chargeback, eBay is going to waive the fee and you're not gonna have to pay it. It's if you decide when eBay tells you that there's a case against you, a chargeback against you, if you decide to dispute that chargeback, you are now taking the risk that you could be stuck with a $20 fee and that's for every chargeback that customer's doing against your account. Now. At that time, if you decide, you know what, I don't have the information, I don't wanna mess with this, I just don't wanna be bothered with it, let's say it's a $5 item, $10 item, you can certainly go ahead and choose to issue a refund to the buyer, and that should be an option that eBay gives you, and that'll close the case. eBay will report to the credit card company that the charge is not in dispute, or the chargeback is not in dispute, and that will let them know to go ahead and refund that money back to the buyer. That's if you choose not to dispute it. And I would say you are wise to dispute it every time unless we're dealing with a five to $10 item, $15 maybe. But for me, I think it's worth taking the, ch the, the chance of that dispute fee, provided that you have all of your ducks in a row and all the information to provide eBay because while this channel might 
seem like I'm anti-eBay, and I'm not. They have gone to a bat for me uh, a couple occasions when it comes to a chargeback over the last year or so, a couple years, and all while I was under managed payments. And I've been successful with them. And so this particular chargeback $20 fee is going to hit people. And it's going to hit people when you've done everything you're supposed to do. And I guess sometimes it's just about principle too, standing up for what's right. I did everything as a seller I was supposed to do, and I'm going to stand up, make a stand. I'm going to provide all the information I need to provide eBay so that I can win this case. Okay. Let's say a customer decides that they're going to report item not received to eBay. You provide that tracking number. It shows that the item has been delivered. eBay closes the case and then they go to their credit card company. Well, even if you lose that charge back, eBay is not going to charge you the $20 fee because you've done your part through eBay, through the case system and per their policy and if they decide to try to charge you a $20 fee after this kind of thing, definitely call them out because it's written in their policy. Per their policy, they will waive that $20 fee. And the same thing goes with a, uh, an item uh, not as described or similar situation like that, okay? If you've given the customer a partial refund or if you've given the customer a refund on the transaction, and or you have accepted the return and let's say after that the customer goes in and files a charge back well you've done everything you're supposed to do this falls all under the seller protection program and you've done everything you're supposed to do as a seller and they should also waive that twenty dollar fee now what i find is that you have a lot of sellers out there for whatever reason have ghosted their customer and by ghosted i mean basically just have totally ignored their customer and when you do that as a seller your buyer may feel after a day or two that they have no other recourse their seller is not uh, contacting them and hey i'm going to go ahead and file a dispute with my credit card company uh, to me they should be opening a return case or even contacting ebay but some people just don't know any better and maybe it's been successful for them in the past and they're going to go right to their credit card company there's nothing you can do about it then but you could have done something about it had you have spoken to your customer and tried to resolve it before it got that far so make sure you do everything you can because when a chargeback is made, let's say it's for item not as described or could be a number of different reasons, okay, you can show your communications with that customer to eBay and of course, to, in this case, to the bank and that will help ultimately decide the case in your favor. Now, one thing that you need to know about this is that eBay has zero, zero, zero decision in this process. They are just the middle man, middle woman, middle entity in this process, which means that you have to pay the charge back and you have to pay that $20 fee. Well, I mean, you don't have to like the fee, but really just don't blame it on eBay, I guess, because know that behind the scenes, they are doing whatever they can uh, to try to help you win this case. Whether it may seem like it or not, they are at least going to bat for you. And of course, if you were to submit the required documentation on your own to this bank, it would probably take you quite a, a bit of time to go through the channels of communicating with this person's bank. eBay does that for you, okay, for this process. And they're not trying to charge you a $20 fee anytime a customer has opened a chargeback. They're doing it when you lose the case. Many times the customer is right and the seller maybe has dropped the ball and stopped communicating. And so for you, you just need to know that eBay here is not at fault. 
and that also if you lose the case, let's say it's item not described and they open up a charge back to the bank, eBay cannot force that customer to send that item back to you. Happened to me. Someone with zero feedback bought some uh, Apple AirPods. This is when I was actually with PayPal on this account and they opened a chargeback through their bank stating that item not as described. I reached out and said, hey, please open a return. But of course, by then it's too late. Uh, there's nothing that can be done. They never, of course never contacted me. They never replied. And with PayPal, I actually lost the case. Customer kept his 125 bucks and he kept the AirPods. And I was like, really, what's going on? And it's horrible. It's horrible when that happens. It's demoralizing and you just really feel like walking away at that point. But it's the cost of doing business. People will tell you this. It's this kind of thing is so few and far between that when it happens, it probably isn't going to happen for a while. And just rest assured that if you sell enough on eBay, it's going to happen to you eventually. And it may happen more than once. But if you are doing a good job of selling on this platform, then you can absorb that loss. I hate to say it. Many of you are going to dispute that down below. And please put your comments down below uh, if you think I'm wrong or you disagree. But that's how I feel about it. But also put your comments down below if you've actually experienced um, a chargeback and how did that go. And are you currently experiencing a chargeback where you're dealing with this $20 uh, dispute fee? I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on this video and it came out to be a little longer than I had hoped, but I had spent some time before making this video studying eBay's policy on this issue. And I'm also bringing you my own personal experience with chargebacks and it doesn't have to be all that bad. It's not something to panic over. If you spend, $40 a year, let's say two chargebacks where you're found at fault over the entire year of eBay sales, it is not the end of the world. Yes, principle, it's, it sucks. Uh, you shouldn't be asked to pay the $20 fee. I agree with you there. I understand eBay's point where uh, they're charging a fee, but I think that there's sometimes we just don't see what happens behind the scenes and we're quick to say, well, this shouldn't happen. But aside from it being a possible money grab on eBay's part, it could be the fact that it's happening so often right now that, uh, and, and a lot of it could be because in many cases, you have a lot of sellers who aren't responsive, that this is their way of maybe docking those sellers. And unfortunately, it's gonna catch some very good sellers who are doing everything they're supposed to do. So don't let it bring you down. Don't let it keep you from selling on eBay and just don't let this whole thing alarm you. You know, it's not going to happen enough to make it worth, in this case, a long video. But I, I had to get out here, get out in front of it and discuss this with you because there's just a not enough clarification. There's just not enough clarification being provided by other YouTubers and I'm going to come in from behind and I'm going to try to clean up that mess. So share this video. If you like the content, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. And of course, we like you to hit that notification bell because we want you to know when we do things like go live or make a new video. So comment down below. Tell me what you think. But I'm going to cut this video short. But just do me a favor here. Keep listing, keep selling, and know that flipping ain't easy. And we're going to talk to you here at the end of the week. Take care, guys.